All right, hello, my name is Daryl Martin with ApexInvesting.com, and this is an Apex Sniper series about be the target or be the sniper. It's your choice, and we're focusing on Thrive in 2021. And I got to throw up some risk disclosures real quick, you know, know what you're doing before you do it, all that fun stuff. And some reminders for you before we dive in. Open house. Uh, we're going to do another open house next week. So you can invite friends and family. You can share it on Facebook once the announcements come out. But uh, we'll be launching an open house. So anybody you know that's been wanting to get into trading, that's curious about what you're doing, um, you can invite them in. NT8 support room. I want to say, you know, I, I appreciate everybody that is in the room and anybody who can volunteer in that room, just being in that Skype room and helping answering questions for other traders. I know a lot of traders have helped you. So um, if you can volunteer to help others where you know, you know, answers to questions, that would be awesome. I'll bring it up in the ER room tomorrow. We'll get you added in. If you don't know how to get added in, it's on the uh, Sniper page. Earning season. So uh, who's aware that we are in earning season? And the markets are moving off of it, right? So let me go over and make sure you know where to check out the earnings calendar over here on apexinvesting.net. If you go down to the news calendar, then it'll load up the calendar and it'll have the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ main earnings dates and times that the wire release comes out. Okay? So yeah, we saw a big Microsoft bounce and a lot of nice moves um, coming out. And tomorrow we got Apple. So one of the big moves coming tomorrow. Be aware of that one. Um, and let's see here. They got, they're coming out at 430. So that'll impact post market. But be aware of it. We also got Facebook coming out at 4 o'clock, which will impact. So you want to probably be out of the market during that time. So, all right. We got Tesla coming out at the same time at 415. So, but uh, anyways, just be aware of those earnings announcements. And again, you find them under the menu, under news calendar. And Sherry is amazing. She actually updates this calendar for us every single quarter. So one is for the S&P 500's weight, one is for the NASDAQ's weight. Okay, that's why we have two of The right side is NASDAQ, left side is S&P. Um, all right, so that covers the earnings announcements. And we'll get that one out of the way. Um, okay, now who was on yesterday when NQ went ballistic? Like it was, I mean, it was just flying up and down. I mean, it flew down 300 points in a matter of just a matter of minutes. Okay, so either you really know how to trade in fast markets or you shouldn't trade in fast markets. You're one of two people, okay? Most of you are probably, you should not trade in fast markets, okay? And you have to let it slow down. So who agrees with that statement? Do you think you should just back off, step away from the keyboard, let the craziness get over with? So now I'm a little nuts, and sometimes I like those crazy markets if they're going in one direction. But um, even ES was going fast. Everything was moving like crazy. So, you know, there are times, like the interest rates dropped, and they talked about delaying, you know, the... Um, Stimulus package, all that came out at one time, and when that happened, everything just went. So, there was some great money to be made, but there's also some great money to be lost if you try to time it wrong, okay? So, just I just want y'all to be really careful and not get ran over, because no matter what you were trading, no matter how you were trading it, TA, chart trader, manual, it was going to skip trades, Okay? So just be careful when that happens. Thrive event. Who's ready for Thrive? We got our Thrive live event coming soon. We'll be doing an early sign-up discount. And we're even going to have a Thrive merchandise package where you can get like a t-shirt, a pen, one of the uh, three and done boards, uh, poker chip, a uh, squish bear, or bull actually, 
uh, sort of a stress ball, but more of a patience ball, you could call it, where you can add that on to it if you want to. And we're going to be giving away, the sooner you sign up, we're going to give away a lot of Thrive big drawing tickets. Okay? So, uh, the big drawing is going to be for a $10,000 platinum membership, lifetime membership, or for two days with me where I fly you here, pay for your hotel, food, transportation, everything. And uh, we take care of you. And I, I, you sit right next to me, set up a computer, you know, you can trade. So you can choose the platinum or you can choose two days live with me. So where will I publish the sign up? I will publish it everywhere. It'll be in the room. It'll be in your email. It'll be in text messages. It'll be on the website. It'll be in the members area. It'll be on all the Skype groups. So you won't miss it, okay? And look for that to be coming out next week. All right. Um, if you want two days live with me, that is an option, Daniel. So just Skype me. And you have to pay for the one-on-one. -on -one. It's two days minimum, eight hours. Just to give you an idea of the cost. Eight hours a day, two days minimum, 250 an hour. So... Yeah, you gotta you gotta muck stalls, all that fun stuff. Feed the chickens. <laughs> so that gives you an idea of the value there. So and of course we're adding in the airfare and the hotel and all that other fun stuff too, and food. And um, I feed you well. So, Lilu, many of you took advantage of the flash sales. Who in here took advantage of some of those amazing sales that Lilu had? How many of you took advantage of multiple accounts? All right. Well, if you've not passed them, it may be best to cancel them before the next billing cycle comes up. I've seen some of y'all have like 10 or 12 accounts. Okay. Or three accounts or five accounts. Remember, they're going to be full price starting next week. Okay? So, you can log in and you can see when the renewal date is. you got to cancel before that. Uh, but I just, you know, I'm not encouraging you to cancel if you're doing well. But I am encouraging you to be prudent with your money and not go in and, like, have, like, three or five or ten accounts cancel and then you can't afford your Apex membership. Then you're not learning anything. Okay? Uh, multiple accounts, you can sign up for multiple Wigaloo accounts at the same time. Will they have more of those promos? I don't know. That was a sort of out of nowhere, left field thing. They told me about it, and I was like, let's go with it. So, there's not any planned. All right. Is it safe? I mean, they fund you, and they're taking the risk, so I'd say it's pretty safe. I've been paid out $300,000 plus from them. So, uh, you know, if you need to, go back to demo until you master things. Then go to Wilu. okay? Be part of the Thrive Live event that's happening in March. Then go back to Wilu. Don't use Wilu as a paid demo. Use the free demo. Okay, so use the free demo, okay? You can reset any account, that's 75 bucks, but you still get billed on that 30 days from the 30 days that you started it, okay? All right, so does everybody understand that? I just want everybody to not be in a bad place. I can't see it, Christopher. Because we can't click on links in the thing. But I'm guessing you had a great day. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you can get free demo data and a free demo account without paying a dime. So if you don't know about that, then you know ask us. But it doesn't cost you anything to use Ninja to use it in demo to use the data. Okay. Um, and just you know let us know in the room if you have any questions about that. Okay. Um, so. Let's talk about simplicity today. What do y'all think? We haven't went over that in a while. So I thought I'd bring it on up over here. I'm going to rewind it back to this morning. And let me see. Let me get my pointer. Hold on a second. Little Harry Potter wand thing. All right. So we're starting off 8.30, and this is what I'm looking at, okay? A lot of times, y'all don't know this, but I hop in the room shortly after 8.30. So I don't wait till 9.30. I usually hop in the room about 8.30, 8.35, something like that. And this is something, you know, you don't necessarily want to wait on or maybe you want to learn it in Thrive. But you definitely want to master simplicity. But we want to teach you in Thrive. I'm going to teach you how to master simplicity with Sniper and putting them together. But the big thing is, if you're trading simplicity right now, you probably should be trading micros on it. Okay? Because uh, you can do really well with some micros. But looking at this, I mean, just watching the market... Is there anything right here? I mean, even though you got potential short there, it didn't fire up. Like, do you see anything telling you you want to take a trade yet? It's just ugly, right? Just oscillating around settlement in the morning. And then we get a shoop shard up. Well, a shoop shard. <laughs> we shoot sharp upwards. <laughs> um waiting for John to laugh at that one. <laughs> but uh, not this time. But anyway, so right here we got a big move, but what's the issue with this bar right here? I mean, it's a valid trade, but what's the issue with it? It's a long bar. A lot of times we're going to have a pullback. It goes a little bit, and what does it do? It pulls right back down. About halfway. So if you would have got in right here, then once it closed above this level, you would have been out of the trade right there. So really just nothing happening in the morning. It goes over here, it comes down, it moves down a little bit. I didn't take a single trade before open. Now we did get a nice little move where it started to move up, but this is something I really wanted to point out today. I was watching this as it happened when the market opened up and we shot up and then we shot, you know, down a little bit. Then we shot way down and we shot way back up and it was just having a hard time breaking higher. So we can't enter this trade because we're in the dark zone anyway, which is five minutes before and after open. We don't place trades. But do you see how it's like just going down, up, down, up? If you're watching this like bar by bar. And it's just not able to break higher. Do y'all see that? What does that tell you if on the market open it can't shoot up? What is it probably going to do? If it's going up and fly, I mean, the little thing, 86 all the way up, I mean, 30 points. I mean, up and down, up and down, up and down. And just can't break higher. What is that telling you is probably going to happen? I mean, we got a lot of volume. It's it's earnings season. So it's probably going to go down. So what should you be looking for? You should be looking for a short. Okay. And look, it goes back up there again and still can't break higher. And then, boom, shoots down. 
That's in less than 30 seconds there. Shot down. Now, that is a big bar. Would everybody agree with that? And usually I don't take trades on big bars. In this case, since we just bounced on that high over and over and over again, I'm expecting it to drop. And it is not a small risk. But you could do it with micros, right? I decided to go ahead and take this trade because both are angling down and we couldn't break the high. That makes me think we're probably going to shoot down for the open. Okay, so we tried to shoot up. We could not do it. It tried, it gave it everything it had. This is reading the market. Okay? Goes down, comes up a little bit, makes you nervous, and then shoots down, shoots down, and shoots down to what? Dynamic magnet. So if you would have got in this trade, you would have got in at 13481. 13, 4, 62, 50. That's about 20 points. Would that have been a good place to take your profit? Would that have been a good place to be done in less than five minutes? Yeah. Okay. So you could have did that, done that trade and been completely done for the day. After that, what did it do? It shot back up. It came right back down. And what is it doing now? It's doing the same thing it did on the upside. It keeps hitting that bottom, but it's not breaking it. So if you didn't get out before, may this be a good clue after it shot back up 10 points and shot back down? Actually, it shot up about 15 points and shot back down 15 points. Well, this may be, be a good clue that it might be a good time to take profit. So, if not, you better tighten your stop up. And it comes down, it nails that dynamic magnet again and shoots right back up. Comes back down, it's giving you a third chance. Okay? What are you expecting to happen if it keeps testing this and it can't break it? Yeah, expecting it to shoot up. It came back down. Now it's that third touch on the dynamic magnet. And I said to everybody in the room, if you're not out of this simplicity, who was in the room this morning where I said, if you're not out of this simplicity, you should be out now. So when I called that, I was like, you should be out now if you're not out already. Like you've had your chance. You know, because I could see that first one maybe waiting, but after it shot up and shot down, and then the third time, like, you've had your warning. Okay, well, it shoots down more. Man, I should have taken it. That's what you're thinking. But then what happens? We start getting a reversal. All right, so, yeah, you could have made more money. But was this, this, I mean, this would have been great. It would have doubled your profit. Another, you know, 20 points there. But was it worth it? When it's testing that level over and over and over again, you're already up like 20 points. Was it worth it? No. Because it had clearly tested it multiple times. And finally it broke down here. And decided to start going back up. Now, the market was trying to go up this morning. So, how high do you think the market might go if it goes up? Go back up and test that top again. That's what I'd be looking for. Okay, because there was obviously a lot of orders up there. A lot of demand up there. So we get in the trade, it makes us nervous, it gives us an LRE, LRE1, and just keep shooting up, and now we're back at that same top.
All right, notice how it went to the dynamic magnet and pulled back and gave an LRE first, but it went up to that same top. <coughs> if you took this trade, you were, went from 450, you made basically 45 points so far, coming all the way back up here. I took this trade. This morning, I made over $3,000 on just four contracts. You got the LRE. That's awesome, Hugo. So if you only had one contract or if you had, you know, five micros, whatever, you still would have made a lot of money. Would this be a good time to tighten up your stop if you're back at the same high it was testing? This is looking left to trade right. Okay. Look that, like trying to do something, nothing's happening, goes down. You had your chance, it told you. Now you got a short. So the LREs, let me show you the LREs here. You got a long right here. It pulled back to within two ticks of the previous solid line. That's important, the previous solid line. Go up, you grab 10 points. It pulls back here again. Got another 10 points. Or maybe just take it off at the settlement. Which still would have been more than 10 points. All right, so there's a short right here. It's flown up, it's flown down. It's 10 o'clock. All right, so the markets are going to start slowing down a little bit. So they'll slow down a lot at 11, but they'll slow down some at 10. So if you take this one, your first target would be what? Yeah, it's important to be aware of your time of day when you're trading these. The first target would be that settlement wall. Yeah. It hits that. So you could have taken it off right there. You would have made, I mean, another seven points. Is that good? Is making seven points on a trade okay? I mean, is making 50 awesome? Yes. But losing a whole bunch is not. Okay. So you got that trade, it keeps going down. Now, what is a way to tighten up your stop? I've talked about a way to tighten up your stop before. Who knows what that is? If you want to tighten it up just so you limit your risk, you can put a hard stop at the dotted line, that dashed line. So either you can take your profit or you can tighten it up. Okay, it breaks down. Where's it probably going to go next? Dynamic magnets. It hits that. So that would be a great take profit. And I mean, that's 490 to 463. That's like 27 points on that trade. And you got, and we're not even talking about looking at the 30 tick chart and looking at the, sni the sniper chart. That, we're going to get to dive into a lot during Thrive. So that's a great point. Also, look left. Right here. We oscillated right here on the way up. We oscillated and we pounced this level really hard on the way down. The entry bar was we're both angled down. So right there. So 83 down to 63. I guess that's 20 points. So definitely, would you want to tighten up your stop if you aren't taking your profit already? Because you should probably expect some oscillation on this right there. So you tighten it up. Now you would be out if you kept trailing with the dotted line. But if you left it at the old dotted line, now you'd be out of the trade. Are you upset that you're out of that trade? After it flew back up, literally 20 points. 
So should you be upset when you're out of this trade when it flew in your favor 20 points and you didn't get the extra 20 points? Okay, this is, I think this is a huge thing that we have difficulty with. Right? We get upset when we're like, man, I, I should have held it longer. Because I would have made so much more. But if you have a good reason that you see on the chart to take profit, take it. Okay? I mean, you're up 7, 10, 20 points. Take the dang profit if it's at a good level. I'm not talking about just money. I'm not talking about you're up a bunch of money or you're up a bunch of points. I don't care if you're up 7 points or 70 points. Okay? And I, d I just hope that you see that, that you're like, you start, you become okay with taking profits. The entry bar, again, was where both lines angled down. So right here, it angled down. And here it angled down. So that's your setup bar. Pulled back. And so, I mean, it could have barely broke there by a tick. If you didn't take that, then it came over here and gave you another entry right there. And that was your official entry. And is that okay? If you got in right here and you took profit to here, is that okay? 73 to 61, you made 12 points. I mean, think about it. You're trying to make 30 ticks a day. That's your goal. That's the goal to make six figures in 12 months to make a quarter million a year. 30 ticks a day. How much is 12 points? How many ticks is that? Yeah, 48. How many of you hold on to trades? Trying to, you're having a hard time with simplicity because you keep holding on to the trade. And then it flies against you. Anybody here in that boat? Did y'all know that most of the time I'm done trading by like 10 o'clock? I mean, John, I, I often I will Skype you, right? So when I was done the day after that move up, I was done. I got moved down, got move up, and I called it. I heard somebody say that they took the short and they weren't out of the trade and they didn't get out until it came way up here. There are other instruments you can trade simplicity on. I just prefer it on NQ because it moves faster. It's more likely to trend. Yes, I Skype John for accountability. And he will tell me, get your hands off the freaking keyboard. It, 
And I gotta tell you, that's that's been one of my hardest lessons. Is just stopping. <laughs> it better be the same place. <laughs> And down emotionally, yeah. Yeah, well, and then you're sitting there for hours trying to make back all the money you lost. And it's moving slow as crap because now it's like 11 or 12 o'clock and you're like sitting there at 2 or 3. And you're like, if I just would have stopped this morning. So Andrew says, you know, I've learned my lesson. I thought that today, how would I feel if I won or lost with a second trade? So, and that's it. That's one of the things we talk about in the trading psychology and the mind mastery course is ask yourself, how will I feel if this trade goes against me? You know, it's okay if a trade goes against you, but not if you should be done already. All right, so I mean, if, if y'all can learn this lesson, how many of you would have had a better year already? I mean, only 26 days in, if you would have just stopped when you were up 150 bucks. If every day, like once you hit 150 bucks, you just stopped. I'm asking everyone. I'd have been funded six months ago, one person says. I mean, I'm getting dozens and dozens and dozens of people saying that they'd be better off. So I want you to know you're not the only one. But y'all have seen the six and three presentation, right? It's not based on making a whole lot of money. It's based on making the exact same amount of ticks today as you make in a year. Literally, like, the amount of... You make 30 ticks today, your goal is to make 30 ticks in nine months. It's just a matter of contracts. I mean, I only did four contracts on that trade. I made $3,600. Or $3,500 or whatever on that one trade. It's all about the ticks, and literally when you learn your job is just to get 30 ticks a day, 
that's your goal, then you start like getting that sense of success with I got my 30 ticks. Not that weird feeling that you got to stay in trade. And I've had to learn it even harder. You know how hard it is? Because I try to stay in the room until at least 11. And I got to watch. I have to watch the charts. So I've had to learn to like, if I want to trade for real money, I got to put it over to you know, the trade copier and move to micros or something. You know, because I'm sitting there for another hour or an hour and a half after I'm done. Because I have to stay in there. Because I'm staying in there for y'all. But you don't have to stay there. You can walk away. So, so many of you, I mean, there's probably, what, at least 60 or 100 people on there that said, me, I would have had a better year if I would have stopped. You want to have a better year? Who wants to have a better year in 2021? Who wants to have a great February? Stop when you're up 30 ticks. You don't even have to ride the simplicity all the way down to the dynamic magnet. You could literally just take your 30 ticks and be done. Because you never know how crappy the day is going to get. And one thing I have learned that is true in trading is it only takes one bad day to wipe out Days and weeks of good days. Who agrees with that? It only takes one bad day to wipe it all out. And how many of your bad days are true because you didn't stop at 150? Somebody said all, too many, most, a lot. You're like, I, green day, green day, green day. Man, I made this, I made this, I made this, I made this. Oh, crap, I just lost everything. Think about where you want to be at the end of the year. Do you want to be making 20 grand a month at the end of the year? Who would like to be making 20 grand a month in December? All you got to do is make 30 ticks a day and stop. Yeah, maybe you're doing a sniper trade. One bad trade wipes out two good trades. And that's one reason I like simplicity. One good trade can take over many bad trades. Is the opening easier than the closing? Yes, the opening is the easiest time of day to trade. But the closing can also be a great time of day to trade. The middle is very iffy. All right, so back on the simplicity chart. So coming over here and now we're oscillating between this settlement and this dynamic magnet. Coming down, coming up. Still hanging out in this area. Choppy zone right here. Now we're breaking out to that same high area where it couldn't break higher if you were still trading, which hopefully you're done. But you could have taken that because both are angling up. That's an early entry. Sometimes I'll trade during close, but most of the time I just trade during the open. Didn't break the high. That one did, but it wasn't angling down. That one did, they're both angling up.
We're back up to that same high. And I talked about this this morning. I'm like, here's the third time we've hit it. There's no line in the sand for you to look at. But there is that same high. Yeah, the only way to have the history is to be subscribed to IQ Feed or Kinetic. If you miss the entry, you can only take a reset or an LRE. That is correct. So look to the left to trade right. So settlement's way down here. If you took this simplicity over here, right there, you sort of chopped your way on up. Would this be a good point? I mean, you got in at 1386. You're up 14 points. A reset's when both change colors. And they go from both green to both red. It can be very good to draw a line. Like you see, like it hit up here. And this is an advantage of having it on your own charts. But... You can draw that line in the sand just to keep an eye on it. When you're getting close to it, maybe time to take your profit. So what do y'all think? Are we at a good point of taking profit? Yeah. What if it shoots up 40 more points? Is it okay that you took profit? Are you done for the day? Yeah, we're at a nice round number. That's a good point, Patrick, at 13,500. You're done in one trade. You're done. If you didn't get the first three, okay, that would have been done. This fourth one would have been done. All right? And then look what happens. Even if you could have got more, look at all that that you had to go through. Now there was an LRE there where it dropped down. You could have taken an LRE. That would have that would have got stopped out. So look, we're just hanging out up here. Waiting on the market to do something. Finally, it takes off. So what does it do? It doesn't give us... We don't like that LRE. And then it starts chopping up here. And now we're looking at a potential long. There actually was a long entry right here, an early long. That pulled back down for an LRE. And that one shot up right to the wall. Could you have taken the profit at the wall? 506 to about 520, 16 points. Did you have to keep writing it? I know so many of y'all are just writing these out for the worst case stop loss that I teach you, which is if it closes below the solid line, but that's the worst case stop loss. Fifth one right there. Gonna be done for the day. And look how it just comes back down. If you didn't take it, you're riding all this back. Now it's angling down. Now it breaks a low. Now should you be done for the day or should you keep trading? <laughs> all right. Well, let's see how it goes. Ouch. Okay. And notice what this was doing right here. If I go back over here, and I redraw my, my line there. I need a ray, don't I? Redraw my ray. It 
I drag it across, make it straight. Look what it's doing. It's actually bouncing between the wall and that level. So that might make you a little shy on taking that short, but it would have got you. All right, there's a long, which you should be done for the day. Ouch. Right? There's a short. Early entry short. That one goes down. And it's out there. Didn't quite make it back down to the wall, but you could have got enough points to be done. I mean, look over here, right here, where it's hitting this level again and again. Right there, right there, right there, right there. Like all those times it hit that level. This is what I'm talking about looking left to trade right. So you see these levels where it's hitting again and again and again, and that's when it comes down to that. It comes up at LREs. It comes right back down to that. It comes up. It comes right back down to that. And then it shoots up. So if you want to trade simplicity, do you think you're probably going to want IQ feed so you can see the entire chart on your screen? So you can look left. Does it suck paying 160 bucks or whatever it is for a data feed? Yeah, but do you make it back in a trade? So if you're going to do it, do it right. So LREs, you're looking for a bounce. So like here we had a target. If I look left, came up and it bounced up. I'm looking to go back down to that same target. I want to have a reason to think it's going to go back there. Now it shoots up. I've already hit that target one, two, three times. Am I going to LRE this one? Like, do you think this is a good idea to LRE it after it hit that bottom three times in a row? Okay, so no, I, I would not LRE this one. I'm looking for an LRE that has a target, that has a reason for coming down to it, not something saying it's probably going the other direction. And it did. And now it has a long. Which gets... Let's see if we're... We're almost below it. Hit. And look what it did. Like, and this is, I'm, just, I'm trying to, I hope this is making sense. But right here, that is not the line I want. We're hitting this over and over and over again. Take this line further on over here. Look at that. We bounced right up to that level where we've been oscillating off of. Is this probably where you want to take a long? No, not right back into that same oscillation point that's been this high over and over and over and over again. That's where it keeps going down from. And now it's sort of chopped down, it pulled back up, it's got all the stops, and then what does it do? It comes right back down to it. So if you did take this short, that might be a good point to take your profit. And then it takes off, it goes right down to a dynamic magnet. And look, it would, would have been worse staying in it for all of this, for all of this, for all of this. No, just take it off the dynamic magnet. You go in there, 71 to 61, grab 10 points, be done for the day. And we'll be talking about this, but these ranges, as you learn to identify them on simplicity, you think they might help you not take sniper traits?
Like, let's say you get, you're in a trade and you get an ETX long, like right here. You might not want to take it. Or you get an ETX short right here. You might not want to take it. A lot of those trades y'all are getting hit on Sniper. As you learn to read the simplicity chart and see these ranges it's flowing in. Because the problem is, on a simplicity chart, this little section right here could be your entire chart. Right? Do y'all understand that? Like, this little area could be your entire chart. And that's all you see. You don't see all of this happening. You don't see these levels back here where it's been bouncing off of over and over again. So it gives you a bigger picture view. And this is a lot of what we're going to be diving into in Thrive. So now we got a short right here. Again, off this choppy dynamic magnet. And what does it do? It shoots the other way. And look at how it's just bouncing off that level. Do y'all see that? Again, again, again. Finally it breaks. And then it turns back down. So, that wasn't the most structured lesson. But, did y'all get something out of it? I mean, if y'all notice on my chart, I have about an hour of time showing on my simplicity chart. Like, do y'all think y'all can take this, learn to stop when you're up, learn to take profits, and learn to look for bounce, like areas that's bouncing off of and draw lines just to be aware of them? Yeah, LRE is used a five-point stop below the solid line. More monitors are your best friend. <laughs> now, I only pay attention to... I have six monitors I actually spend my time looking at. I have 12 monitors. And that's because I like having full-screen charts, because I can see more data. So you got anything to add, John? Put you on the spot. One of my drew, yeah. Yeah, it's an hour. On the sniper chart, or on the supposed yeah.
<laughs> yeah. Looking at the 30 tick, looking at the 10 tick, I'm looking at another market, yes. I only look at six. There's a reason it's last. <laughs> Right, you might be looking at a short over here, and there's a stack of three mini magnets in the way. Like, don't. And this is 
and this is a and this is a sample of that. Do you think those levels that I drew on simplicity would be helpful on Sniper? You go without without Sniper, it's complexity. Yeah, they'd be helpful. So it goes the other way too. If it's hitting a level and you're getting shorts right here, you know, maybe like, uh, may not want to do that. So anyways, we're going to talk a lot about that on Thrive and do a lot of chart review like this. And we want to give you a sample of what that's going to be. All right. So y'all get some good lessons tonight. The biggest one being stop when you're up 30 ticks. When you reset, that doesn't impact your 30 days. It's from the original 30 days. Awesome. I'm glad you all had a great night and a great day. And I hope you'll have a fantastic trading morning tomorrow. And I'll see you all there, okay? Um, last piece here is just be in the elite room, ask questions, share charts, learn, grow, be engaged, hop on the Facebook group, hop on the Facebook page. Um, if you share post on the Facebook page and comment on them, we'll give away a free um, month of gold membership next week. That sound good? So we'll choose one person that shared and posted on the Facebook page. All right. Y'all have a fantastic time and I will see you in the morning forward to helping you thrive in 2021.